Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to look at the skill tree public test. The skill tree test has been live for a few days, and unfortunately, I've been busy with school and such, so I haven't had a chance to talk about it. But now I am. I'm going to have to break up my thoughts into multiple videos, as otherwise you're going to hear me rambling for over an hour. I have so much to talk about in this new system. Also, other things that are unrelated, but let's go into the topics of what I want to talk about. This video is going to be relatively concise and is going to be just on the mechanics of the new system. How you use the UI, what different experience types there are, what's the process. The next video is going to be cost comparisons. If it took you a certain amount of time and effort and money in order to get a certain boost from a module, how long does it take you to get the same boost from the new system? And are those cost comparisons fair? How is it to new players in terms of economy? How is it to old players in terms of economy? All the money related stuff. Next video after that will be balance issues. There are certain nodes that actually may or may not negatively or positively affect the game in terms of balance. What are those nodes? What do they do? How are they good or how are they bad? And what I would change to improve them. Then the last video is going to be on just testing as a whole in this game. How they're using the public test interfaces, how they're updating things on them, and just everything about that. Kind of a little bit of a rant video in that sense. But first, let's look at the new system. Now you may notice that this skills button up here is gone. It's just gone. You no longer have to click here click through a huge list of the different chassis, click into your particular variant, click on the one you want, click the type of experience you want, click OK, click Confirm, click Confirm, you know, all that kind of stuff. Way too many clicks. All you have to do now is go into the Mech Lab and Weapon Skills. No, 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 just Weapon Skills, just skill tra the Skill tab here, just below Loadout. And uh, the Skill Tree PTS has been giving me a few errors and stuff like that, and it's been taking a while to load today. So we're just going to let it do that as it's thinking its way there. <laughs> error 66. I've been seeing this a few times. It makes me want to go and uh, kill some Jedi. Uh, execute Order 66. But moving on, we have these nodes, and they're broken up into different types. We have firepower, survival, mobility, operations, and infotech. Now, the majority are in firepower. That is simply because they've broken up the individual types of weapons into their own trees. So, auto cannons have their own tree compared to ultra auto cannons, and LBX, and Gauss rifles. Even though they all fall under ballistics, all of those are under their own trees. Under energy, you have normal lasers, pulse lasers, PPCs. Under missiles, you have LRMs, SRMs, streaks. And here we start getting into non-firepower based ones. Defensive, we have increases to your skeletal density and your armor hardening, which increases your structure and armor quantities, uh, respectively, based on a percentage. Fall damage, AMS overload, which increases the amount of damage your AMS does two missiles, which makes them shoot down more. Upper chassis has all your mobility based quirks for your arms and torso. Lower chassis is for your turning rate, your top speed, your acceleration, deceleration. Jump jets is all new. It increases your initial boost. So that initial jump off the ground in order to get you higher and then you slowly coast your way up. Vectoring, which increases the amount which you thrust forward, and vent calibration, which increases the amount of time you can burn and be in the air. Mech operations has your heat containment, which is your max heat capacity. Cool run, which is your heat dissipation, your startup and shutdown sequence uh, reduction in that time, improved gyros, all that kind of fun stuff, hill climb. And then a very interesting one at the bottom, which is magazine capacity, which increases the amount of ammo that each ton of ballistic uh, weapons can carry. So if you take a AC-2 under the old system, it would be guaranteed every single time is only 75 rounds. Under the new system, if you get magazine capacity, it's now 85 rounds instead of 75. So you're getting a potential damage boost. 
I've run the numbers on this. It ranges between 15, uh, 13% and 20%, with everything averaging out around 15%. Sensors has your target info gathering, your sensor range, your enhanced zoom, your target decay, the amount of time you can hold a target after it moves behind line of sight. And then very interesting, we have seismic sensor, radar deprivation, and enhanced ECM. They have made a change to ECM in this PTS that uh, revolves around how uh, much of a cloaking it gives. They've massively reduced it and then have had it so that you need to get these two skill tree nodes in order to, um, my freaking <laughs> antivirus telling me to do things. No, I don't need to restart my computer right now. Um, so yes, you're gonna have to get, to get ECM back to its old power level, you're gonna have to get these skill tree nodes. I'll talk about more about that in the balance issues tab uh, in video. And Auxiliary, which is UAV range, UAV duration, capture, rate assist, um, enhanced narc, all your sort of sneaky light mech uh, sort of bonuses. So now you're going to ask yourself, how do I actually use this system? How do I unlock stuff? You can see I've unlocked the laser nodes down here because this Arctic Cheetah uses ER small lasers, and that's going to be a benefit to it. But say I wanted to unlock something else. Let's go into my mobility. I want to go to my lower chassis, and I for sure want the speed tweaks. How am I going to get to speed tweak 5 here, and also all the other speed tweaks that are down here? Well, you're going to have to purchase a node that is connected to it, and that node has to be before it in order for it to unlock. It has to be a parent. You can do this through either general experience or mech experience. However, there's going to be a change with the new system of compared to the old where say you had multiple arctic cheetah primes that particular variant you had multiple of them they shared a skill tree and they scared they sh scared they shared a pool of experience under the new system they're all going to have their own trees and their own pool of experience so you're going to have to transfer something called historical experience onto that particular mechs experience now it doesn't seem to be showing up here but we can probably find a mech where we can do that on uh, it should be on the atlas and we'll come back to the arctic cheetah in just a moment here and you would just type in a number hit transfer and it would transfer the mech uh, transfer the experience although it may be a little buggy for me right now as this uh this whole pts is a little bit slow for me right at this as it goes ah here we go so we're still on the Arctic Cheetah, it seems. Okay, never mind then. We're still on the Arctic Cheetah. Uh, things are weird. Arctic Cheetah Prime Historical Experience. It has 151,000 of it. And on this particular mech, I have 170,000. But say I wanted to transfer 5,000. All I need to do is type in 5,000 here and then hit Transfer Experience. And this is going to transfer this historical experience from the combined pool into this particular mechs experience. Give that a second to transfer, and it should work. And yeah, so if you had multiple, say, I don't know, Battlemaster 2Cs, those are really good Battlemasters right now, and uh, there was an error. Contact support, uh, although it seems to have worked properly. And you had a whole bunch of experience on that Battlemaster, but you want to transfer it between multiple Battlemasters that are in your drop deck. This is how you do it. So you can have all those Battlemasters with enough experience in order to level them out. Now, we want this particular thing right down here at the bottom, so we're going to have to start going down and we're going to choose to go on the experience side. So we're just going to click that side of the node and we can see that this sort of pops out a little bit and unlocks the next nodes down. So we're going to continue downwards. Keep on going down here. Excellent. And we'll get the speed tweaks. And we'll unlock all the things down here. Now you'll notice once we get to speed tweak 5 here, we can't continue going back this way. Because this is a parent and this is a child. This is above speed tweak 5, speed tweak 3. So even though we have one that's connected, we can't get it. Because it's before it. So we have to go down 
the entire other side in order to get to speed tweak three. That's just how that system works. Now, my only main concern about uh, these things and the only sort of balance issue I'll bring up in this video is I dislike calling this a tree. I really see this as a skill network. You can have a hierarchical structure in a network where the previous ones have to be completed before the next level of the network can be done. But a network has these uh, choices that span out and you can go back and forth. And as long as you have enough resources, you can get everything flowing outwards. That's how it is here, where a tree is a binary option. You would go down and you would be either going down the left or going down the right. You would get to a, a, a section and you would have to choose one of two or one of three or one of four. And if you took one, you couldn't under any circumstances get the others. I feel like that would be a better system for here. I'll go into the reasons uh, more in depth the reasons why in the balance issues uh, video, but I dislike calling this a tree. I'd rather call this a network because you can just take as many points as you want and it's a smorgasbord. But getting back to this, we have clicked out all these things. We're just gonna finish off this entire tree because we can. And we're gonna spend 20 skill points, some quantity of C bills and some quantity of experience or general experience, whichever one we chose. We can apply those changes and hopefully this will save, although this thing has been giving me some issues. Come on. You can do it, PTS. I believe in you. And if it doesn't work, I can show you the uh, respecking with the nodes that I've previously unlocked. All right, so error 66 didn't work, or it did work, but oh, it still apply changes here. All right, so we're just going to revert those changes. We never got those in the first place, but we do have some firepower ones that we have already unlocked. And we're going to use those to show the respecking. So say. I wanted to change this Arctic Cheetah from using six ER smalls, and I wanted to change it to use pulse lasers. So I'm gonna put the five or six small pulse laser design on it, and I need to change my skill tree. Now, what I have to do is respec. Now I can choose to either respec the entire tree using uh, C bills or MC, or I can respec individual nodes. So say I wanted to respect just this laser heat node. I can go to it and refund with MC or refund with C bills. The left is always sort of the more premium currency and the right is always the more free currency, if you know what I mean. Because C bills over here and it's mech XP over here. Well, this is general XP, which is more costly and more important. And this is MC, which is more costly. So we can choose, we'll, uh, we'll do it with C bills. We'll click that and we can see that now we do not have this anymore it's showing that that is being reduced and it shows the cost to remove that node and then how much experience we get back great thing about it is when this thing was first announced where they were talking about having it so you lost experience if you unspect and respect now that is not true you get all of your experience back so if you have you know you're working on a mech you have 50 points into it but you want to change everything and you want to respec it you can revert and respec and you'll be still back at 50 points you won't be at like 40 points because you chose to change things around so that's a real good thing but we can go back here you can click through these one by one or for example if you get one that is the only parent node that allows certain child nodes to exist such as the root node here with laser duration one if i respec that everything respects. So you can do things on mass that way if you want. Or if I revert those changes, if I go to a particular one and sort of get rid of like this one here, because there would be no other ones, the laser range four and laser heat two, if I get rid of laser range three, those go away, those two. And you can sort of cut out individual sections. It makes it quite easy to respect the ones that you want. We'll just respect the whole thing. Hopefully this is going to save. If not, we can always fake it. I mean, you would just pay the amount of C bills or MC to get them removed and you get your 
experience back and you would get your skill points back. See if this saves here in a moment. Unfortunately, it seems like it didn't. Or did it? I don't know. Didn't work. All right. But after you reverted that, if you wanted those particular nodes back, you would have to repurchase them at the full cost. And this is one of the things I'll go into in the cost comparisons and how I think that should be different. But yeah, that, that's basically it. That's how you use the new system. Uh, this video is just about the mechanics of it, so just go out there and give those a click through and give those a try. Uh, you can still do the old converting experience. This this is one of the new uh, uh, windows they have. So these say these three variants: the Arctic Cheetah, the Kodiak, and the Mad 2C. You can choose to convert experience into GXP through here. You can you know it's okay. We'll, we'll do uh, fifteen hundred from this guy, or you can just click put it all in there and do like 50 from this guy, then you can just go convert to GXP. Boom, do it all from one thing. It has the MC cost, you click go. It's really easy compared to going through the old system where you had to go to each individual mech, slide it along, all that kind of stuff. And here you can do it for, uh, oh damn it, I was hoping that they were gonna make it so you can get rid of those last little bits. Unfortunately, it's gonna still round to the nearest uh, 25 oh oh well but yeah that's uh, that's the new system uh keep in tune for the next video in this we're going to talk about the cost comparisons so getting these boosts from lasers what would it cost previously in order to get those boosts and how much does it cost under the new system but that'll be it for now thanks for watching and good hunting